All right, so in this video today, we're going to learn how to solve equations using what is called the house method. Now, I need to give credit to a teacher named Michael Chipperfield for this one. He showed me this method, and it works great with students that really struggle with the traditional methods of solving equations. In case you're wondering what you do, basically you draw houses. And you can see some houses I've drawn here in red, and I've drawn them around each term in the equation. All right, so let's get straight into this and solve one of our equations. We're going to solve this equation here for x. Now, there are two steps. The first step is to draw houses, and the second step is to get rid of the numbers furthest from the pronumeral. In case you don't know what the pronumeral is, it's basically the letter. In this case, it's the letter x. So we'll start by drawing our houses. This equation actually has two terms on the left side of the equal sign. 2x is one of the terms and 3 is the other term. So I'm going to draw a house around my first term, 2x. And then I'm going to draw the next house around the 3 and I'm actually going to include the plus sign. It's really important when you draw these houses to not just draw it around the number or the pronumeral, but also around any plus or minus signs that are to the left of your term, to the left of the 3 in this instance. All right, so we have our pronumeral x living in one of these houses. So you could say that the number 2 lives in the same house as x, whereas the number 3 actually lives next door. So we're told to get rid of the numbers furthest from the pronumeral. So we're going to get rid of our neighbor first. We're going to get rid of the plus 3. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to perform the opposite operation. What is the opposite of plusing 3? The opposite of plusing 3 is to minus 3. Remembering that when we perform an operation on the left side of the equal sign, we must perform the same operation on the right side of the equal sign. So I also need to minus 3 from the 9. So why do we do this? Well, whenever you perform opposite operations, they cancel each other. The plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel each other. And then on the right, 9 minus 3 will give us 6. So we'll write this down below that we're going to have 6. You'll notice that we didn't cross out the 2x, so we're going to write that below as well. We're now left with 2x equals 6. When we are at the point where there is only one operation that remains, we don't need to draw houses anymore. We just need to perform the opposite operation. This here actually means 2 times x. What is the opposite of times inc by 2? Well, it's to divide by 2. Remembering that we perform this operation on both sides of the equal sign. Now, by performing the opposite operation, this is going to cancel the 2 next to our x, leaving us with simply x on the left. And then 6 divide 2 gives us 3. And we get x equals 3. We've been able to solve this equation and figure out what x equals. Let's move on to a harder equation now. Let's look at 5 minus 3b equals 8. So I'm going to draw my houses around each term. I've got the term 5, and then my other term is 3b. Being careful to put my house around the minus sign. So it's actually minus 3b. So after drawing our houses, we look at our pronumeral. We've got the pronumeral b. We can see that our number negative 3 lives inside of the same house as b. Our number 5 is next door, which means it's furthest from our pronumeral b. We need to get rid of the 5 first. Now this is actually a positive number. This is positive 5. To get rid of positive 5, I need to perform the opposite operation. I need to minus 5, and I need to perform this operation on both sides of the equal sign. This is going to get rid of the 5 that I had here. 
leaving me with negative 3b on the left of the equal sign and 8 minus 5 is 3. So this will equal 3. Now there's only one operation left. That is multiplication. This actually means negative 3 times b. And when there's one operation left, you don't need to draw a house. I just need to perform the opposite operation. What is the opposite of timesing by negative 3? Well, the opposite of this is to divide by negative 3. And I need to perform this operation to both sides of the equal sign. Now, this is going to cancel out my negative 3 on the left, leaving me with b on the left of the equal sign. And then what's 3? divided by negative 3. Well, 3 divided by negative 3 is actually negative 1. So now we know that b equals negative 1. Let's move to another equation, a harder one again. First of all, I need to draw houses. Now, this one actually only has one term on the left because there's only one single fraction. I'm going to draw my house around the whole fraction. And I'm going to imagine this as just one house. But to be more specific, it's actually a two-story house. I've got upstairs and I've got downstairs. I can see that the 1 is upstairs with A and 5 is downstairs. So what number is furthest from the pronumeral or furthest from A? Well, I would have to say the 5 because it's downstairs. Now, what operation is being performed here? Well, when it's a fraction, it actually means divide. This is actually dividing 5. I'm going to perform the opposite operation. The opposite of dividing 5 is timesing 5. And I'm going to perform this operation on both sides of the equal sign. This will cancel out the 5 at the bottom of my fraction, leaving me with just a minus 1. And then on the right side of the equal sign, 3 times 5 gives us 15. Once again, when there's only one operation left, I don't need to draw my house. The one operation left is to subtract 1, so I'm going to perform the opposite operation. I'm going to add 1, and I'm going to do it to both sides, which will cancel out the minus 1, and leave me with A. And 15 plus 1 is 16. So I find out that A equals 16. Let's now solve another equation. And we'll draw our house again. Once again, it's only going to be one house because it's one single fraction. And we can see that it's going to make a two-story house. We've actually got three numbers here. We've got the 4, the 2, and the 6. The 4 and the 2 are upstairs with y, and 6 is downstairs. 6 is furthest from the pronumeral. So I'm going to perform the opposite operation to this. This actually means to divide by 6. Fractions mean divide, the opposite of which is to times. So I will times by 6 on both sides of the equal sign, which means I can cancel out the 6 below. Here I can see that I'm left with 4y plus 2. So I'm going to write that below. 4y plus 2 equals, and then 1 times 6 gives me 6. Now I've still got two operations left, so I need to once again draw houses. I'm going to draw a house around the 4y, and I'm going to draw my house around the 2, remembering that it's important that it goes around the plus symbol as well. Alright, I can see that 4 lives in the same house as y, and that plus 2 is next door. So I'm going to subtract 2. I'm going to try and get rid of the next door neighbour, and I'm going to perform this operation on both sides of the equal sign. This will cancel out my plus 2 because plus 2 and minus 2 are opposite operations, which leaves me with 4y. And what will 4y equal? Well, 6 minus 2 is 4. All right, now I've sort of run out of room here, so I, I need to rewrite this 
up on the top right. I don't need to draw houses anymore because there's only one operation left. My <coughs> one operation is to times by four. So what's the opposite of timesing by four? Well, dividing by four, isn't it? So I'm going to write divide four on both sides of the equal sign. And now I can cancel out the four, leaving me with just y. And four divide four is one. So I've been able to find out what y is, y equals one. Now we'll move on to our final equation. This will be our hardest one. But some of you might have noticed that when you master the house method, it doesn't matter how complicated the equation is, it seems to be just as easy as doing one of the easy ones. The only thing that's different is that there's just more steps involved, but they're all kind of the same steps anyway. All right, so let's do this. Let's draw our houses. I've got two terms here. I've got a fraction, and, and then I've got the plus five. So I'm going to draw my two-story house around my fraction, like so, and then a separate house around my plus five, okay? So I've got about three numbers, all living in one house, in the same house as my pronumeral C. And then I've got a single next door neighbor plus five. So I get rid of the neighbor first. I subtract the five, which gets rid of the five, and I should have done this on the right side as well. So let's copy down below all those things that I haven't canceled. I've got three minus two C, all over seven, okay, I've, I got rid of my plus five, and then six minus five is one. All right, so I need to draw a house again. This time I only have one house, my two-story house, like so. So what number do I get rid of next? The three and the two are upstairs with C, and seven is downstairs, so I'm going to get rid of downstairs next. This actually means to divide by seven. So the opposite operation for this is to times by seven. And I'm going to perform this operation to both sides of the equal sign. This will cancel my seven down below, leaving me with three minus two C. Now I'm, I'm just going to rewrite this over on the right, three minus two C. And then on the right side of the equal sign, I have one times seven. This will equal seven. All right, I'm left with two terms, so I need to draw two houses, one around the three, like so, and one around our negative 2c. All right, so which number do we get rid of next? Well, our, our negative 2 here, or our minus 2, is next to the c, and 3 is next door. So I get rid of my neighbor first, I subtract the 3, and I do it to both sides of the equal sign, cancelling my 3, which leaves me with negative 2c on the left, and 7 minus 3 is 4. We are now at the point where there's only one operation left. We do not need to draw a house. This is basically saying negative 2 times c, the opposite operation for which is to divide by negative 2 on both sides of the equal sign, which will cancel out the negative 2 and leave me with c. And 4 divided by negative 2 will give me negative 2. So c equals negative 2. Now I hope you've enjoyed the house method. What you will notice, it doesn't matter how big the equation gets, the house method makes it quite simple to solve. It, it just means that there's going to be lots of steps to solve it. Now there are some equations that cannot be solved using the house method, but I want you to know that when you get these equations that can't be solved using the house method, you just end up getting stuck and, and then you can't solve it, which is okay. I've never been in a situation where the house method has got me to a point where I got the wrong answer. Instead I just get stuck, which, which is a good thing. I'd rather get stuck than come up with the incorrect solution. Anyway, I hope this helps you solve equations from now on, or maybe if you're a teacher, hopefully it helps you teach students how to solve equations using this really simple method. 
Anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please support my channel by subscribing and clicking the bell notification icon.